Hi guys, welcome to Q&A with Coach Rebecca. I am Rebecca Smith, founder and director at Complete Performance Coaching. I'm also a high performance coach specializing in individual sport athletes age eight to 18, helping you break through fear, build confidence and find your flow in sport. I also work with a team of fabulous sports psychology experts who specialize in other sports like baseball, lots of gymnastics experts around here, um, running, endurance sports, team sports, we got it all covered. So if you have um, a young or even an adult or college age athlete, you can find a coach that can help guide you personally through whatever's keeping you from your maximum potential. You can always schedule a free consultation at completeperformancecoaching.com slash schedule. And that's 20 minutes with one of us kind of like getting our mind on your sport and seeing if there's something you can do to take yourself to the next level. And another way that we contribute to your ever growing, um, you know, hopefully mindset is doing these weekly podcasts and Facebook lives. And today's topic is going to be all about problem solving. And I'm going to share some of my experience with problem solving, hitting walls, giving up, and then getting myself back up and continuing to move forward. Cause I know that that is if any champion athlete has experienced hitting walls. You know, I've interviewed Olympians, they hit walls. They all have moments where they're like, I can't do this, it's too hard. You know, or I don't know what I'm doing here. And they get through it, they get through it. And so I'm gonna talk about the type of mindset that gets you through it and the type of mindset that does not and give you some tips on how to bring the right kind of mindset into your daily life. And just like any of this stuff, it takes some time because we're literally rewiring your brain for a new way of thinking. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I am so down in the wrong type of mindset, don't worry, start digging yourself out now, there's so much hope. Okay, so we're gonna talk about, a lot of people who listen to me and follow me are gymnasts who struggle with fear. And it's a, it's a problem that feels totally hopeless and never ending, but it is not the only problem you might face in sport. So if anybody is struggling with any kind of problem, and for those of you parents and coaches who are, who are listening, who are tuning in, if you have any problems or any, you know, big obstacles that just feel too big or too hard right now, then this, this episode is for you too. All right. So, um, what we're really going to talk about is called growth mindset. So you may have heard of the concept of growth mindset versus fixed mindset. You don't necessarily need to know those those names, but I'm gonna tell you the difference between the two. And the first, first illustration I'll give you is, I want you to give yourself a ranking on a scale of one to 10 for how, you can either go talented, how talented you are in your sport, or how smart you are in school. So for those of you who are not athletes, who are, who are more um, you know, business people or um, students, just figure out what your scale is. If you're an athlete, then just decide how talented are you? Okay, so on, one is low, like zero talent, zero intelligence. 10 is high, high talent, like I am gifted, I was born with this, um, I'm super smart, you know, whatever. So decide on a, on a talent scale of one to 10, what number are you? Okay, so I'm gonna think in terms of, um, you know, intelligence, because that's gonna be my example that I'll use throughout this episode is, you know, I was always told, oh, you're so smart, you're so smart, you're so smart, okay? So I always kind of had this like, I am smart, so therefore it's a given, and I'm like a nine out of 10, I just came that way, and lucky me, my mom was very like, you're so smart. And thank you for that, mother, um, I guess. I'll tell you later how that all kind of, uh, manifested but so now notice if you gave yourself a low number or if you gave yourself a high number because I actually would I would like to challenge you especially you coaches and parents listening in to eliminate the word talent from your vocabulary and here's why if you think you are at a 5 out of 10 and that's all there is that can be very limiting if you think you're at a 10 out of 10 and then something is hard, then you're like, well, it can't be my fault because I have so much talent that this should be easy. So it obviously is, you know, the problem is lies elsewhere and you can't take responsibility. If you think you're out of one, why even bother? I stink at this. I'm not going to try. So the number you just gave yourself, I want you to just kind of wipe it away. 
because it doesn't it doesn't matter because it's not even real. And here's why. If you if you're stuck in that fixed mindset of I'm only this good, I'm only this smart, this is the hand I was dealt and it's all there is to it. Can't do that. I'm bad at this. This I'm good at, but I don't know why that didn't work out. Must not be my fault. It's super super limiting. Okay? So, what I want to help you guys tap into instead is the idea that hard work and effort is the answer. You know, and I always tell a story about one of my favorite, favorite gymnasts of all time, who was one of the least coordinated seven-year-olds I had ever met. And this girl loved gymnastics and she worked hard. And she and this other girl went all, they rode all the way up to level eight, side by side. You know, one was riding on talent, one was riding on effort. And the girl who was riding on talent was the one who got the mental block on beam because all of a sudden she's like, I don't know why I can't do it. I'm supposed to be talented. What's wrong with me? This is not fun. I'm not good at this. I quit. The other girl who had been having struggles her entire gymnastics career, but kept trying it again, trying something new, asking for help. She had to be resourceful because she always had a little bit more struggle than this other girl who just would fly through the air effortlessly. Long story short, this girl just got a scholarship to UCLA to compete gymnastics. And I am so, so, so proud of her. You know, and, and she is a, an absolute testament to, I just got to keep showing up and trying hard. And that is how I reach my goals. It's not because of anything else other than I show up, I'm positive, and I work. And so that's, that is what, that's really the name of the game. Okay, so I want you guys to think of a time when you had a struggle you know, and you felt like, I cannot figure this out. You know, maybe it was a, a really difficult math problem. Maybe it was a skill that you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot get this. I was a gymnast, so my kip was like trying and trying and trying and trying and getting spots and trying and trying and trying. And anyone who knows what a kip is and who has gotten one in their life knows you have to try a 100,000 of them sometimes to get that one to actually work but you keep going and you keep going because you see other girls that they're popping up on the bar all of a sudden. You're like, oh my gosh, she did it. Okay, I got to keep trying. I got to keep trying. For me, it was around school. So the, the strange thing about, you know, having this like I'm so smart mindset as a child, my intelligence is, you know, extra off the charts. So I'm so smart. Then when I struggled in college, guess what I did? I quit. I quit. I got nine months into my school year. I, I had this terrible GPA and I quit. And I was like, school's not for me. I need to go do something else that's going to make me successful without needing a college degree. And you guys are all going to be like, wait, don't you have a master's degree? I'll get to that. So I quit college. I quit college and kind of floundered around because I had this idea in my mind that it was college. College was the problem. You know, it couldn't have been me because I'm super smart but I quit. I didn't even try to get back into it. And I knew from the time I was 12 years old, I wanted to be a sports psychologist. That was my dream job. I wrote papers about it in school. I knew I want to be a sports psychologist. I want to go to school for psychology. I knew, and I went and I started and I quit. And then, you know, I finally, I spent a couple of years around, like floundering around and was like, you know what? Dang it. I want to go to school and I don't care if it's hard. I'm just going to take one class and see, you know, so I kind of dipped my toe in and was like, if I can take one class and do okay, then maybe I'll sign up for another one, you know, and, and, and that was what I did. I took a psychology class and was like, that was the worst teacher and the worst class I've ever taken, but I loved the material. Okay. But guess what? Three weeks into that class, I, I called a friend and was like, it's too hard. It's too much work. I don't think I can do it. I, I don't know if this is the right thing to do. It's such a long path, seven years of school. Am I insane? And she's like, why don't you just go back tomorrow? <laughs> why don't you just go back tomorrow and don't think so far in the future, just go back tomorrow. And I was like, okay. And I went back tomorrow. You know, I just did my homework and I showed up. And then the next day I did my homework and I showed up and I did that and I got an A in this class. And then I, t I signed up for two classes. And three weeks in, I called the same friend and was like, it's too hard. I can't do it. What am I getting myself into? It's seven years of school. I can't do this. And she's like, why don't you just do your homework and show up tomorrow? And I kept doing that. And I did that for seven years. I mean, it wasn't so difficult after I had gotten those first, you know, first couple semesters down. Then I went to grad school and was like, this is hard. And I know I can do it. 
And like, yeah, I could either call her and say I'm going to quit. I actually tried to quit six weeks before I finished. I tried to, I like had that same, like, it's too hard. I can't do it. But thank goodness I've got people in my life who can support that, you know, the, the, that part of me that has a fixed mindset that comes from so much conditioning around being so smart. Isn't that ironic that I, you know, I was told you're so smart, you're so smart. And then I just couldn't take responsibility for failure and I could not handle failure because I was like, I am supposed to be perfect. And if I can't be perfect, I'm out of here. So I learned just, you know, through this journey of going back and finishing my master's degree, not quitting over and over and over when I wanted to, because I had supportive people in my life who just reminded me, just go tomorrow. That's all you got to do. You don't have to save the world. You don't have to do 10 years of education right now in this moment. You just go tomorrow. Okay. And so that's, if you've got a problem you're facing, you're like, this is too hard. I can't do it. You're in the fixed mindset. You're stuck in that. I only have so much. And what you need to do is just put in the effort. Just put in the effort. And what happens is just like muscles, your brain is a muscle. I mean, not, you know, any of you who are like biology experts are going to say, well, no, not quite. But, but here's how it's like a muscle. If you're doing conditioning and, and you're trying to build muscle, let's say you're doing pull-ups. Okay. You start doing pull-ups and you feel strong. You start to feel a little weaker. The fatigue starts to kick in and then you get to the point where you're like, oh my gosh, I don't, and you're shaking. You're like, I don't know if I can do another one. And then you push through and you get that next one done. After you get past the fatigue, after you get like that negative thinking kicks in is like, ah, this is too hard. You do one more. It actually creates these little tears in your muscles, which you might think like, oh no, that's terrible. You don't want to tear your muscles, but it's these little microscopic tears in your muscles that then build back. They repair even stronger than they were before. And that is how muscles built. But if you just go up to the point that's comfortable, you stay the same. You don't actually get any stronger. You just stay the same. So every time that you get, you hit that wall and you stop, you're maintaining. If you want to improve, if you want to get smarter, if you want to get better at a skill, if you want to get stronger, you have to hit the wall and keep going one more. You have to just go tomorrow. You have to just show up one more time for one more pull up. That's what's required. Okay. So your brain is similar. Let's say you're working on a math problem and your brain is like, it's too hard. It's like that last pull up. You're like, I, it, not going to work. I don't understand. But then you ask for help. You get a little more information. You, you look at it in a different way. You go, how can I figure this out? And you just don't give up. You put that next one day's worth of effort into it. And it's like fireworks happen in your brain when you finally see the answer and you're like, Oh, I get it. Oh my gosh. And what just happened in those moments is you literally got smarter. You became more intelligent. You became stronger when you get over that and do that one more pull up. When I went back to school that next day, I built grit. I built that effort, that work ethic. And you don't build it by like, you know, just waiting to feel motivated. You just keep going. You just do tomorrow. You just do the next thing. You just do the next step. The next thing that's in front of you, do that one more pull up. That is what creates champions. It's what creates people with master's degrees. It's what creates strong, healthy athletes. It's what creates happiness. It's that like getting over the hill. And if you think it's just too hard, I'm not good enough, I can't do it, then it's curtains. Then you're done. You're stuck. There is no more. If you do that, if you, you know, it starts to get hard doing pull-ups, you're like, can't do it, then you're right. If you're like, I'm going to do one more, just one more just one more, just what's next, just that. And, and you just, you know, kind of Thomas the train. I think I can, I think I can. That is how you get through it. And so for the, any of you guys who are dealing with fear or who are dealing with disappointment or anything that just feels like it's too hard, it's too much of a challenge. What's the next thing you got to do? What's just that next thing you got to do to get those fireworks to go off in your brain, to get those little microscopic tears to happen in your muscles, that discomfort, pushing out of your comfort zone so that it will build back stronger 
and ready. And But then you got to do more pull-ups to get that to happen again, right? So we don't give up. And that's why it's important to know where you're headed. And it's important to have goals. And there's an exercise that I did with one of my clients today that kind of illustrates one of the ways to do this. And basically, we, we drew a map to, to her success. She, I think she's like nine. She's one of my littles. And so she's really visual. So those of you guys who are visual can do it this way. You write your starting point, you know, point A, where you are now. Point B is your finish line. For her, it was doing her round off by handspring again. And then we wrote down some roadblocks. We had to write down three different roadblocks. For her, it was negative thinking. It was, um, there was a couple, it was um, people watching me, me being embarrassed, and fear of falling. Okay, so we, we wrote down those three obstacles. For each one, we came up with a bunch of creative solutions. So the first thing we did was we drew a line through all the obstacles to the end. Then she wrote all of the different things that she could do to get around these obstacles. And then she drew a new path through the way around the obstacles. And no, it wasn't a straight line. It was like shoots and ladders. You know, you, you make some progress and then you end up back down. But if you keep taking turns, if you keep spinning that wheel, you're going to get some ladders, you're going to get some shoots, but eventually you will reach the finish line. And she was able to see that and go, okay, even if it gets really hard, even if I hurt myself, even if all of these things that I'm worried about happen, I'm just gonna keep spinning that wheel and keep taking turns and I'm eventually gonna get where I wanna be. And so that's how I want you guys to look at it, kind of like, you know, shoots and ladders of your life. And, and so one really simple way to add this into your vocabulary is take out the word talent and add the word yet. If it's, I can't do it, it's I can't do it yet. If it's, you know, just add the yet. I'm not there yet. I need to just keep putting effort into it. Just show up tomorrow. I'm not there yet, but I'm walking in that direction. And, and if you can see just one hard thing as an opportunity for growth, you are succeeding. You are, you are developing your growth mindset. So that's my challenge for you guys this week. If you have questions, you can always send them to Rebecca at performhappy.com. And I will see you again next week, Tuesday, 4.30 Pacific on the Complete Performance Coaching Facebook page. I'm live or you can find me on the Perform Happy podcast. See you soon.